why in the morning if it's Tuesday, it's most definitely Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashiro is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular interview, we dive into the insight. We are getting an insight into the music business. All right, so in studio, I'm joined by Waruk's, uh, okay, Aru Waruk's Productions, that is. In studio, I'm joined by Washira Warukira, who is the CEO of Waruk's Productions. So starting us off, Karibu Sana. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're looking fly? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're good? Yeah. yeah. How is your day? I'm well, uh, it's a bit uh, chilly today, mm -hmm. but I'm well. Great. Yeah. So starting us off, so what is Waruk's Productions all about? So Waruk's Productions is a music production studio. Mm -hmm. It's based in a place called Banana in Kiambu County. Mm -hmm. And we deal mainly with uh, vernacular music production, okay. especially Kikui music. All right. Yeah. So that's your niche? Yeah, that's my niche. All right. Yeah. If, uh, but any chance you have an, a client, in this case an artist who wants to do uh, different mm -hmm. music, uh, not just vernacular form, to yeah. Is it possible? Yeah, very possible because mm -hmm. uh, I am not just the one who produces there. I have uh, another amazing producer called Jamie Pierpod, who also happens to be the pianist for Ben Soul. So for him, he deals with mainly um, EDM music, but he can produce any other kind of, uh, you know, uh, music. So yes, we open our doors for other kinds of uh, artists. But our main thing is just vernacular. Okay. Yeah. So when did Waruk's production start? It started in 2019. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We started and. Uh, what was the inspiration, uh, the process like of starting, you know, Waruk's production studio? So um, I, I have always been passionate about music. Okay. I was a church pianist for like a, long, a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, and I wanted to start a studio whereby I could bring in artists to come and express themselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, I started off as a music teacher mm -hmm. and then I applied for a grant mm -hmm. and uh, that's how I actually started the studio. I got a grant from Mastercard Foundation mm -hmm. and uh, yes, I started the studio and here we are. Alright, so yeah. uh, take us through, because uh, I am 100% sure mm -hmm. that uh, opening up a studio is not cheap, yes, right? Yes. Especially when you look at the equipment that are required, because yeah. you need, at the end of the day, you need to produce quality content. Mm. So how did you go about acquiring all the studio, your studio equipment, mm. and uh, was financial aspect of mm -hmm. it a challenge? Yeah, it, it was uh, quite a challenge because even, uh, let's just think of uh, purchasing earphones, like they are quite expensive. But uh, what I did, I was thinking of like going for a loan, mm -hmm. but uh, loans, you can't get a loan un unless you have like a, a good collateral. Uh, and so I started like applying for grants. I started pitching my idea, my studio idea to investors because I was starting a studio that could, uh, you know, um, help people uh, create employment opportunities for producers and also like create a, a space whereby artists could make their music. So I pitched my studio idea to people. I pitched it to, you know, organizations. I pitched it to banks and uh, eventually I got a grant. And uh, through that grant, I was able to acquire my studio equipment. All right. Yeah. Take a slow, Waruks. From Waruks Bashira. Take, mm. take a slow. This is a very critical issue, especially for the young people mm. who want to probably get into production, yeah. video production, mm. uh, and also if they want to be music producers. Yeah. It's a very essential thing to look at when it comes to getting the equipment mm -hmm. and investment, yes. having someone who can invest in mm. you. So how did you go about it, and who are the guys who helped you out? So at first, uh, you'll be surprised to know that I had never done music production anywhere. Uh, I have a degree in business administration. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went online first. Like the first place I went to was, you know, online. What do I require to set up a studio? And so um, I, I saw that uh, you need to get like uh, the gear, the gear that you need and the prices for that. So um, I started visiting studios, local studios. Uh, I went to Nakipo, I went to other studios here in Nairobi, and I would meet with producers. I wanted to do some sort of a baseline survey, you know, 
uh, talk to them and ask them what are the best equipment I should use for the studio. And I, I was comparing that with what I was seeing online. And so uh, I knew that I didn't want just to go into a music store and then start, I want a mic, I want a mixer, I want this. I did. I went to the store to look for the prices and all that. So when I had all the gadgets in a piece of paper or in an Excel sheet, now I was able to go to you know uh, people and, and tell them that, I, look, I need to set up a studio and this is the cost. These are the best equipment that I need. And that's how I went about that. That way I was able to get like the best equipment which produces quality music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So consultation was really good. All right. Yeah. All right. So earlier on you mentioned that you have, uh, your background is in business administration. Yes. Uh, how did you get, gain the skills when it comes to music production and you being a music producer? So um, normally uh, I, I say that if I want to do something, the internet is the place, yes. you know. Uh, we are lucky that we have the internet in our age. Very true. Um, I, I, I wanted to learn how to play the piano when I was young, but anytime uh, I would go to the guy who was playing in church, he would say, Usiguze taharibu. <laughs> so, like, uh, it took so long for me to start, like, learning how to play the piano. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I got to college and I was studying uh, I was here studying and feeling like I want to do music. So I went online and I would start, you know, playing uh, piano and guitar. So I taught myself how to play piano and guitar. So when I started uh, the studio in 2019, I employed somebody to work in the studio. And uh, the person, however, wasn't so honest. And so I wanted him to work in the studio where I could go and, you know, do some other businesses. But then uh, when uh, he left, I went online and I started looking about how to go about creating beats, you know, music production. And it took me a few months. And um, I was able to create like uh, some music for artists. And I was lucky enough to actually like uh, meet uh, an artist like Moringe, who actually like does vernacular music. And uh, has music went viral, which created a good opportunity for me to actually like, you know, reach out to other people. Uh, so, what, teach what is the name of this one? Uh, Moringi does cover covers. covers uh, okay. Yes, so you can like find like Indoshene. Uh, she did a mm -hmm. cover that really uh, is doing well, and another one called by Wanganango. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I I learned a lot from just going online and uh, teaching myself how to play and how to produce. Yeah. All right. So, do you have like uh, I would like to find out couple of uh, services that the mm. studio offers mm. because I know you <laughs> you do a lot of stuff yes, you do a lot yeah. of creative stuff mm. so what exactly does Baruch's production provide to potential clients so we first of all we make music that's mm. the first thing so we mm. produce music we also produce our corporate jingles mm. we produce our voiceovers uh, we also make um, you know uh, audio books so basically anything that is audio related, we can make that. And also we, ha we outsource videos. So we have like a pool of videographers and photographers. So when, the, when anyone comes on board and they want like to make a song, we provide those services for them. Also, I have been learning uh, artist management and uh, currently I am offering uh, artist management services. Uh, I am managing the guy I just told you He's called Pierpot Jamie. He's Ben Sol's uh, pianist. So I have been using my business administration skills to actually like help artists because there is a gap. Most artists focus on their art and they forget the business side of it. Right. So that's another service I'm offering. Okay. So yeah. in everything that you do, how would you say? How do you monetize from all this? So monetizing is just looking at uh, what is the market offering? What are other producers charging out there? Uh, what is the, like, the acceptable fee? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we look at the value we offer. You know, an artist will come to, into the studio and they will say, I want to make a song. And uh, you start advising them. You tell them that I can make a song for you and then you just go and do whatever you want to do with it. But for us, we go an extra mile. You know, we tell them that there are ways you can put your music out there. There are platforms you can put your music out there. So we educate them. And for that, we charge based on that. 
okay. on the value that we give the artists. All right, and how do you build your credibility uh, for potential clients? We have this story that has been trending last week of mm -hmm. Wilkins for Dili, allegedly that uh, he has been duping uh, the young uh, artist uh, mm -hmm. Trimio, mm -hmm. and a couple of other stories uh, from a lady who does podcasts and mm. uh, According to her, mm -hmm. uh, Wilkins Badili was uh, the management in charge of all that. Yeah. So how do you build your credibility to your potential clients and ensuring that actually this is going to be clean, mm -hmm. professional yeah. sort of kind of business? So at first, when a client reaches out to us, we send them a Google form. Like we tell them to write for us down whatever they want to do, whatever services they want from us. And then we, we don't ask them to send us any money first. They have to come to the studio, we talk, and then they, they showcase like the music they are making. And then they only pay a deposit after we have made a bit for them. They don't have like to pay everything at once. For us, we believe that their client should pay us when they are satisfied that we have delivered the services that they needed from us. All right. yeah. And what is your marketing strategy? Uh, currently, we are using social media mainly. Okay. Uh, we post on you know, our social media accounts and, uh, of course, the word of mouth. Any client who comes to our studio, we believe that if we give them the best services, they will go out there and they will say, I made my music from Maruk's Productions and I think you can also like, you know, get the best services there. All so, right. yeah. Okay, so if we want to be a music producer, to run a a music production sort of kind of business, mm -hmm. does one need to be licensed or even certified? Yes, I think to run any business, mm -hmm. you need to be licensed and to be certified because uh, at the end of the day, there are services you will need. You know, I could have chosen to like, uh, when I started, I was working in the, in the house, but I still went for the, for the license because I knew that if I go to the bank, and I say probably I, I need a loan oh, yes. or I need like uh, to open a bank account. The first thing they ask you is, do you ha are you licensed? You know, how, how can we uh, verify that your business is real? So I say that uh, the, the process is tricky because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially when you are starting, you don't have funds to actually spare. So um, most people choose to maybe do it later. But I believe that when you are doing something, do it right when you're starting. So, it's very important to actually get a license. All right, for someone who's watching this conversation and mm. they are potential clients or guys who are into the music industry artist, mm. what would be your advice when it, when it comes to choosing a producer who, uh, who has best interest, who has your best interest at heart, mm. and it's not just uh, business as usual? So I, I normally say this to anyone I meet. First of all, know who you are as an artist. What is your artist identity? You know, once you know that, then look for a producer whose vision aligns to yours, mm -hmm. right? You know, there, there are producers who, who just want to make your music and tell you, go and do, you know, yes. go and bless your, your people with your music, <laughs> yeah. right? They'll be like, I've done my music in the booth, yeah. studio, I've done everything. And they'll be like, ah, but anyway, you're done, this is good, here. Have yeah, it. have yeah. it and go, have right? And go. Yeah. Yes. So normally I say this, do you know yourself as an artist, right? Do you know what you want to achieve? If you're a gospel artist, are you just going to go to anyone just because their beats are, are awesome or they are known? Are you just going to do that? Or are you going to look for a producer who actually gets you and gets your vision, you know, sits down with you and says that for the next one year, can we actually focus on creating this, creating a vision, you know, creating your business, you know, uh, at the end of the day, once you get that, then you will you realize that there 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 gets some you get some chemistry between you and your producer to the point that the music you are making is uh, is helping both of you, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just about the money, mm -hmm. but it's helping both of both of you grow. So building a rapport is important. Very important. Okay. Yes. All right. For lack of a better word, <laughs> mm. I'm just gonna say it either way. Mm. So. Uh, how does one identify when to be cheap, right? When, do, when to be cheap in their music career and when not to be? Because when starting off, mm -hmm. you, it's a struggle. You get, yeah, it's a struggle yeah, yeah. for you to get your niche, of, uh, your market niche mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be identified as cheap. So when to identify when to be cheap <laughs> in, in, mm -hmm. your, in your space and yeah. when not to be? I think you should never be cheap. 
why? <laughs> in your space. Like, <laughs> normally me, me want to say my, like, truth is, uh -huh. you know your value, right? Yes. You know your value and you know what you can offer. Yeah, but to be honest, when it comes to this music space, um, even though we would like to think in the positive mm -hmm. way, which mm -hmm. is actually good yeah, and advocate yeah. for that 100%, yeah, yeah. but things don't always look out for everyone, right? Well, there are places where you have to struggle, where you have to uh, get paid by exposure. Uh, okay. hey, so, <laughs> exposure. So, exposure. Mm. So when do you identify that it's enough? I've had enough exposure. So, I need to get paid for the value I'm bringing to the table. So I've been telling some of my artists this. You know, they get uh, invited to go and perform for weddings, for church services. And then they are told, come grace uh, our events with, with your, your music, with your presence. With your presence. <laughs> and uh, most of them, they go because they are like, oh, there's a place I can perform and I'll tell people to subscribe. And also build no. up your skills probably. Eh, no, 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 no. If there's one thing I have, I have mm -hmm. noted is that most people in Kenya or in, even in our part of the world, they don't yeah. respect the creative industry. Okay, yeah, from so, that perspective, that's yes, true. Yes, yes. So uh, for them, they are like, if you are not a known artist, they'll be like, ah, this one compared to a platform. Eh? Like, he will come and shine and then that's it. Mm -hmm. So you as the artist, you actually need to know that you are bringing something. You are bringing an entertainment value, mm -hmm. right? That grace, that gracing the event is something. So if they, you can be like assertive and say, look, I will need at least fair. Mm -hmm. I'll need at least, you know, a um, thousand shillings. Mm -hmm. At least ask, be brave and bold enough to say that I need to be paid for the services I That's am, true. right? Yeah. Because if we keep like entertaining that, uh, yeah, people pe take advantage. Even our parents will never like see like the music industry or the as creative industry as a business. Yeah. So, so most of them they are like, yeah, but 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 she's my friend, yeah. but she's my friend, so I have to go. No, don't go, mm. because somebody will hate you for that. But later they will appreciate that you said no, mm -hmm. because you believe that your music has value. Okay. And once we do that, people start seeing uh, the creative industry as something that has value. Mm -hmm. Yes. So clearly, cl uh, closed mouth don't get fed. So <laughs> <laughs> you have to speak Precisely. out. Speak, speak out, out what you want. Speak out. Be assertive. Speak out. Speak out what you want. Yeah. So. Uh, on that question still, mm -hmm. when do you identify enough is enough with exposure? At what particular point? When you're hungry, you know? <laughs> like, uh, start, look, uh -huh. if, 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 you have, if you've never been hungry, then you wouldn't know. Look, the thing is, uh, like for me, I used to play for church like for like 10 years. And it was fun. Like, uh, I appreciate that I was given the chance to play there and, uh, you know, lead uh, the, the worship and all that. But then you get to a point and then you realize that now you're out of school. You no longer depend on your parents or anyone. You depend on yourself. So you have to make a business out of your talents, right? And that is when you actually realize that enough is enough. Anything that you do, you have to monetize it so that mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what are you going to eat? Oh, yes. You have right? bills. To you have pay. bills to pay. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the moment that you actually realize that you have value in what you do. All right. So yeah. when starting off in your business, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are the couple of conscious decisions that you took to scale up the business to what it is, to where it is right now? So training was important. I, I figured that building capacity is one of the best things you can do for yourself. That's true. If you believe that you want to start selling uh, my eye pasua mm -hmm. and uh, you you have only been purchasing you've never like done anything to actually know how it is done it, you can just buy that katroli ka ka alafu you buy eggs and then you think that you're going to make something out of it I think building c your capacity and keeping on learning you know uh, find more knowledge you know create uh, find mentors find people who can help you and uh, I'm always like in the lookout for people who are experienced, I can go to them and ask for advice, you know, and that has really helped me. It has helped me also in the selection of the teams, and uh, that has been a, a great thing for me. All right. Yeah. Do you work with the team, and if yes, yeah. of, how, of, of how many? Yeah, I have in the studio for the music production, uh, I have a, uh, one, one producer, 
and I have I run my studio runs to social enterprises, um, and uh, in those two, there is also like another team. Uh, for instance, we run a program called Net Billa Net. Mm -hmm. uh, Net Billa Net is a um, is a program that creates digital libraries in the rural areas, mm -hmm. and I have a team of five people, uh, and uh, we are about to create a digital library in Dandora. Yeah, starting from early next month. Giving back to the society? Yes, okay. yes. And also I, I run another program called Waruks Live, which intends to you know, create awareness on mental health for young people. Okay. That one, uh, the first episode will be live, I think, this week on mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. So again, I have a team there. So my, my studio has about like eight people right now. All right, so when it comes to the mental aspect of it, mm -hmm. uh, mental uh, program that you yes, intend to yes. start. Is it going to be online or is it going to be on location? It's online. Okay. So uh, we are going to, to be shooting and then we have like the, the live interviews mainly on, the, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, also like uh, in, in the future, we are going like to have a concert whereby we can invite a young person to come and share their stories, mm -hmm. share how they have dealt with uh, stress and anxiety and all that. And uh, with some music, of course, because mm -hmm. we make music. So yeah. we want to use music as a tool of communication. Yeah, and they say music is the only thing that can hit you and you don't feel pain. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so would yeah. you say that this particular space you're into, the mm. music business, is it profitable? Yes, it is profitable. When you're starting, of course, challenges of being uh, an entrepreneur, they are real, right? But for me, I don't look at uh, the challenges I face. I look at the prospects, the future prospects. Um, there are very many ways you can make money from music. Unfortunately, people think that it's only when you're selling a CD. Or it's you only a when, also. when you have a concert. Yes. But there are very many ways. I mean, there are all these uh, digital uh, distribution uh, platforms where if you just put your music and people download, you get paid. Other ways? Pardon? Other ways. Yes. Okay. So um, apart from that, uh, other ways to make money. Yes. I mean, like, um, if if I if I am uh, an artist, I can be hired by a company to make a jingle for them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Those are not like the traditional ways of making money as an artist. You know, you could teach music. Mm -hmm. You could teach how. You could write music for other people. I don't know why some people think that they have to write their own music. Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the things I feel that if we embrace them and we build like our capacity, it's a very profitable industry. So, yes. All right. You mentioned challenges. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a couple of challenges you're facing as a business. Uh, unfortunately, I started my business when COVID-19 came, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had just like started like identified, identifying talents. And then uh, of course, in Kenya, Mainly, we, we don't really rely on the digital world mainly. So shows are important. Concerts, performing for people is important. So uh, the main challenge has been the fact that artists are afraid of making music because they are like, where am I going to perform, right? Oh, yeah. uh, it's social like an distancing with no return. Yeah, it's an investment with no returns. So the challenge has been we are making music, we are keeping it as we find ways through which now we can release our music. I think that has been a very big challenge. Also, uh, raising money to do the videos, you know, raising money even like um, to keep the business going. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you are not having a lot of artists coming in, I mean, you have to find other ways, other creative ways to, to make money. To, to make money. Oh, so, true. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any other projects coming up that people should look out for? Uh, yes, my, I, I am a, a singer, mm -hmm. personally, and uh, I have an EP coming up. Okay, we are just finding out this right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, th that is a project by the studio. Oh, right. So normally the way we run our, our projects in the studio is we have, uh, we have a number of artists okay. and uh, we work with EPs. Mm -hmm. So like uh, we, have, we, have, uh, we have an album coming up. We have mm -hmm. my album. There is another guy called Pierre Pod Jamie. Mm -hmm. he, it's an EDM Afrofusion uh, album. Mm -hmm. We have uh, now the Net Bill Net mm -hmm. project that's coming up. So guys can just
keep checking us out because we are doing some amazing work out there. All right. Yeah. What's your uh, name? Baruks. Baruks. Just like the studio. Okay. Yes. I mentioned you earlier that you look like uh, <laughs> Masai, who is one of our great creatives right here on Y254. Ndamuluze iswali. Sorry, go and you. If you guys look come alike. On, come on to correlate it. Yes. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe now, now I'm meet. <laughs> all right. So how can people find you across all of social media handles if they want to keep this conversation going? Uh, on social media, we are Warooks Productions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a YouTube channel. We, uh, we have a Facebook uh, page, Warooks Productions, just Warooks Productions. Instagram, Warooks Productions Kenya. And uh, also, the, I think the easiest way you can find is uh, Warooks Official. If you go to and find Warooks Official, I have uh, put all my links like on the bio. Yeah. It's sour, sour. You also do uh, drawing. Art. Yes, I do. So it's Warux Gallery. Warux Gallery. Yes, <laughs> there is. The, okay, if you open uh, Warux uh, official, mm -hmm. you'll find uh, the link for Warux Art Gallery. Ah. I do pencil portraits. Okay. Uh, you will find uh, Warux Live mm -hmm. for the mental health. And ah, other it's challenges. Easy if you, if you go yes, for if you go for official. Rook's official Instagram uh, page, you'll find all the links there. All right, thank you very much, Rook. So thank before you. we leave, you're going mm. to listen to your song, and then we'll be right back to sample your comments on on our Facebook page. That is uh, Oshira Warukira, who is the yes. CEO of Warooks Production. He's also a music producer and a lot of other when, other things when it comes to the creative space. So right now, we are going for a musical break, uh, courtesy of Warooks his uh, song. So we'll be listening to his song and then we'll be right back and I'll be sampling your comments. <laughs> 